Roblox. Everybody knows about Roblox. It's a game creation tool that came in 2006 that without a doubt is one of the most popular online family friendly games of all time. Or is it truly safe for the whole family? Well, the easy answer is yes. I mean, are you really telling me Adopt Me was only made for adults? However, since Roblox is a game creation tool and a pretty damn underrated one at that, absolutely anything can be made. And that includes games that would normally be intended for a more mature audience. I'm not talking about whatever the f this 17 plus section is that What's got added. I'm talking about the absolute abundance of horror games on the platform. Horror on Roblox is definitely one of the most popular genres on the platform. A lot of the most played games are horror. Hell, even I play horror games on Roblox. Like I said, a lot of people underestimate just how great the game engine is. Adults can play these games too. Am I just saying this to justify me playing a children's game? Perhaps. Anyways, there are some pretty good horror games that you could play on Roblox. There's Doors, one of the most popular games on the platform currently, which is a roguelike first person horror game where you, well, go through doors. You just keep entering entering various different rooms, finding gold, avoiding monsters, fighting the crazy eyeball man, an average Tuesday for anyone who lives in the UK. There's also a Pyrophobia, which is a backrooms or a liminal space inspired horror game where you investigate multiple of these creepy ass places, trying to avoid whatever creature is hunting you and escape. The best part about these games is that they're all multiplayer, so you're getting Steam quality horror multiplayer games for completely free. There's dozens more that I like, however today we're here to talk about Roblox horror games that are just a little strange or weird as you might say it. And let me just tell you, you will never be the same again after being chased by a giant Roblox foot. So before we start, I'm just going to clarify that I'm playing the weird games that I want to talk about. Please don't get upset if I forget to talk about uh, Glumpy's Carnival of Discomfort. I already got absolutely demolished in the comments last time I talked about Roblox for missing out on games. So just know I'm doing my own thing here. I'm also going to try to cover games that aren't completely unknown. There's plenty of weird abandoned Roblox horror games with zero players, like whatever the hell this is. With that being said, let's talk about a giant nose, shall we? <laughs> Light. There's Roblox. Ever wanted to be chased by a giant soft-spoken nose before? Well now you can in the game Don't Get Sniffed made by Badass Experiences, the same brilliant minds behind Save Grandma From Heaven. We're dealing with the pros here. The basics of this game is very slender, like where you need to get 14 items, in this case boogers, and avoid the creature chasing you while you're collecting them. However, this game is more than that. Whether or not that's a good thing is up for you to decide. The game not only has you collecting items, but finding keys to open doors, solving mini challenges, light parkour, finding tools to assist in reaching areas, and a couple puzzles. It's nothing crazy, as surprise surprise, this game is probably made with a younger audience in mind. I did say earlier that these horror Roblox games were more mature, but kids will always want to play games that make them feel older. Also, if you think a horror game like Piggy was made with adults in mind, I've got some bad news for you. The strange part of this game comes in the form of the monster chasing you, who happens to just be a big ol' schnoz. He looks a lot like the strange man who lives in my closet. The nose constantly chases you throughout the map, and he speaks very quietly about wanting to sniff you in an oddly sensual way. Maybe this game should have been 17 plus. It's really easy to avoid him. You can either run into the safe zone, crawl into one of these crawl spaces, or my favorite strat, abuse the poor AI and jump while running so he forgets that you completely exist. He really wasn't a threat during this game. And that's really all there is to it. After collecting all 14 items, I was able to get the final key, which led me to this giant button that had a 30 second timer. I pressed it and nothing happened at the end of the countdown and I called it quits. This game was definitely an experience. It at least kept me interested enough to play to the end. If for some reason this looks like an incredible experience, there's two other games in the Sniff series featuring a giant foot and a giant tongue, which is just wonderful. Also Roblox went down while I was writing this part of the script, so I think it's a sign from God to never touch this game again. Now that was more of a single player experience, however Roblox horror games are actually pretty known for their multiplayer games. So let's talk about Sonic.exe The Disaster. I, I can't escape the blue bastard, can I? 
Sonic EXE The Disaster, a fitting title for a Sonic EXE game. This game was made by Out Like Roblox, so imagine if Dead by Daylight, Call of Duty Zombies, and Sonic EXE were all combined into one game. That's about how I'd describe this one. This is a 5v1 multiplayer game where five people get to choose various Sonic characters with special abilities, and one person plays as Sonic EXE himself and tries to murk the others. Let's start with the regular characters. So your objective is to survive for a certain amount of time until a portal opens up and you can leave. Each character has about two abilities, which are once again used for survival. For example, for example, Shadow can block and has a slide move, Tails can stun you and glide, and Rouge has the worst possible abilities ever. I have zero clue what this little sensor thing does. Uh, alerts me to his location? I don't really need that when he's hunting me to the ends of the earth anyways. The characters play alright. As the survivors, you can do your basic jumps and sprinting, but the sprint is always going to be slower than Sonic's and the jump and abilities both have a cooldown. It's really not that bad, but I'll admit that the jump cooldown can be pretty annoying at times. I found that Tails and Eggman are my two favorites, mostly because they both can get away the fastest and have an actually useful stun. Unfortunately, even as my man Robotnik, you could still die very easily, whether it be from these weird red rings on the ground or Mr. Needlemouse himself. When you lose all your health, you'll be bleeding out similar to COD zombies, and like zombies, you could be revived by other players, but also once. Also, when you either get to 35 health or are revived, your screen turns this ugly shade of grey, and I know it's not that big of a deal, but it really pisses me off for some reason. If you die for real, you could either just wait out the timer and spectate, or you could join Sonic and become a bad guy, only having a basic attack. Now on the other side, let's talk about Sonic. He controls fairly similar to the other characters, but he is faster. He's got four abilities instead of two. Basic attack, laughing, which I think does nothing, a grab, and the most OP one, invisibility. You can be invisible for like 20 seconds and there's no way of your enemies knowing. At first I thought it was hard to play as Sonic since I was able to juke the Sonics out pretty hard before, but as soon as I got him, I absolutely cooked my opponents. Maybe it's because I'm a grown ass man and these were probably children, but I see it as a win in my book. That's pretty much the whole game. The music when the portal spawns in is pretty solid. There's different maps to choose from, and the models look pretty good too. I had fun playing this game, and I never thought I'd be saying that about a Sonic EXE Dead by Daylight game, my two banes of existence. That was surprisingly enjoyable and fun to play. Let's change that with the next game. By far the bloodiest game on this list is Happy Oof Day, made by Oof Games 2. This one's single player and is more story driven than the other games I've talked about, and it all focuses around that hilarious Oof meme. I'm having a hearty chortle about it right now! So the game opens up, you select play, you then select the first chapter, and you're ready to go. Keep in mind two things. One, this is a demo, so it's not a very long or fully fleshed out game. And two, just like every other game I talk about on this channel, I'm criticizing the games, not the people behind it. It is damn impressive that people can make games no matter the quality. I mean, I definitely can't, that's for sure. Anyways, the game opens up with this very strange cutscene. You're being lured behind a tree by this clown masked man named Oof. After being completely brain dead and actually approaching the man trying to coerce you, this uh, red dude hops out of a car with a rocket launcher and f***ing kills him? Holy shit! this story goes crazy. Anyways, jump forward seven years and it's your birthday and your good pals are throwing you a party. Very quick review of the gameplay. The game controls fine, it's just your standard Roblox control, so nothing really crazy crazy to know. Anyways, you're supposed to enter your closet, get dressed, and open the door in your closet to progress in the game. However, you can also open the other door in your room after getting dressed, but doing this just lands you with a pile of corpses and a knife in the chest. Your friends tell you that they're throwing you a birthday party at the creepiest house that they could find, because for some reason you would want to do that. You proceed to head to the house after passing some missing posters, and your friends designate roles for the party. They prepare the entire thing, and you're forced to explore the house, which you cannot leave once entering. As you explore the house, turning on various lights, you can experience spooky things like this Roblox guy just hanging out and rocking chairs. Other than that, the only other thing you can really do in this house is turn the light on next to this yellow guy and get killed in one of a couple endings. Like I said earlier, this is a demo, meaning there's not a crazy amount to do yet. You can also interact with this head on the wall outside. It did absolutely nothing for me. 
According to this YouTube video, it's supposed to transport you to this crazy upside down dimension, but that's what you get for talking to the faces on the wall. I learned never to do that years ago. There's also two secret ways to die, including clicking on the sign a bunch and turning around to an oof man and walking into a secret path in the wall and being surprised by another oof man. That's all this game really has to offer. It's a little lackluster and the oof theming, while probably intentional, takes away any scary elements from the game. However, it is also again only a demo, so it's not at its prime just yet. I hope the creator goes on to do great things and lets me talk to more strange faces on my walls. Now we're on to the last major game. However, I'm gonna do something I've never done before and I'm gonna rapid fire through a couple of honorable mentions, mostly because I found some weird fucking games out there and there's no way I'm not gonna talk about them. There's a few quick honorable mentions I want to give here to some games that indeed are weird Roblox horror experiences, so let's get this going. Insane Elevator, made by Digital Destruction, is a horror game where you can go on, you guessed it, an insane elevator. There's this strange subgenre on Roblox where you go on an elevator with a bunch of wacky floors, I don't know. Anyways, each floor you stop on has a different scary creature waiting for you. Slenderman, Jeff the Killer, Pennywise, who does not use a knife, Pennywise has never used a knife, why does he use one? And also Whiteface from I'm Scared, which is actually kind of cool. Anyways, I give this uh, the 43 elevators out of 110. Next is Hungry Pig, which just has a lovely thumbnail, made by Fruit Loops Pop-Tart. This game has you going up against what I assume to be members of the Peppa Pig family and stealing their food. You then have to uh, run away from them for as long as possible and rack up points. I stole from this bear, played for like 10 minutes, and just let the poor guy kill me. I'm never playing that again, but the best part was this giant ass nuke button on the side of the screen. I'm glad I could have bombed the f out of the Peppa Pig family anytime I wanted to. Next up is Cheese Escape, made by Spyro734. This game is basically just don't get sniffed, but I think this was the original. Anyways, it's basically just that game, but there's a giant rat chasing you and the walls are out of cheese. I swear I've had a dream like this before. Eight rats out of 12. God's Will, made by Deep Fry Studios, is a multiplayer horror minigame collection based on the manga of the same name. I remember they made a movie about this manga too, which I never watched, but this image alone makes me really want to watch it. Anyways, you play a bunch of minigames such as Red Light, Green Light, this wacky spinning door game, musical chairs, all the classics. I didn't play this one as much as I would have liked to. I'd recommend checking this one out with a couple of friends. And that was the rapid fire round. Now, I will admit, I didn't talk about those games that much, but I just wanted to give them a quick honorable mention. Anyways, let's move into the last game, and I'll admit, I'm cheating a little bit, because while it isn't that strange, it is strange in the best possible way. Let's talk about Jim's computer. Stop posting about baller. I'm tired of seeing it. Jim's computer is a computer simulator horror game made by Grug Champ, and it is unironically one of my favorite horror games on the platform. Oh. And why is that, you ask? It's because they brought back the Super Bowl, baby! Part of the reason I love it so much is because it emulates that classic Roblox style from the late 2000s and early 2010s that I grew up with, and it lures you into the horror game it truly is using this style. I highly recommend you pause and play the game first first if you haven't already. The game opens up on day one and you play as the iconic gym. You get your computer from the porch and set it up. The main thing you're going to be doing throughout the various days is checking your computer. You can order neat little gadgets and weapons from old Roblox days, you can check the news, and you can open this chat software which has no use yet. After this you go to bed and you wake up in the middle of the night checking for anyone in your house. Now I love this part because I had no clue it was coming the first time I played this and also I was entirely expecting cheap jump scares whenever I opened the closet, but no, nothing at all. This is pretty much the formula for the rest of the days. Day 2 is similar, you order some new items, but this time the news mentions disappearances in your town. Surely nothing to worry about. Also, this day has blocks E. cola in it, so it's by far the best day yet. You go to bed, wake up to do your nightly safety checks, and hit the hay once more. Day 3 is when it starts to go a bit south, as the news mentions even more disappearances in your town, but once again, surely nothing to worry about. You get your items, such as this geolocator, which I've 
never seen before, and once again go to bed. However, this time on your nightly check, the TV turns on. That's not really an issue, but what is an issue is that your computer also turns on, and you seem to finally have a message. Unfortunately, it's not very friendly. Day 4 suddenly occurs, and this time your item choices are a bit strange. Instead of silly weapons, it's food, water, and a first aid kit. Also, a military helicopter flies by your house. It's just an average silly day in Roblox. You go to bed after this, but on your nightly check, it tells you there is somebody inside my house? Pfft, hell no, I'm not checking on that. Oh, I guess it just said that to scare me. Oh my god, the door's open. I hate this game. I hate it. Day 5 has finally arrived. The sky is orange, the mayor declares martial law and a shelter in place, and the items you can order have changed again. You get stuff to board up your windows and a black square? Alright. After boarding up your windows and once again going to bed, you wake up and everything just goes to shit. The computer is telling you to stay put, the TV screams at you, and it turns out the black square you had was a gun this whole time. As something tries to get into your house, Jim shakily points the gun at his door before turning it on himself and the game ends. I'd say Outlast has competition here. Jim's computer is an excellent short horror experience, probably the best one I've played this video, but that might just be my nostalgia making me biased. I don't care though, I like the funny Super Bowl, and reading the story in the newspapers about the chemical plant and the abductions apparently being connected in some way was pretty cool. This just goes to show just because a Roblox game is weird doesn't mean it's bad, far from it. I mean think about it, how many games did I really talk about today in a negative light, like two, three? I personally love the strange concepts that some of these horror games try to take on, and with the game creation tool of Roblox being so comprehensive, creators can do whatever the f they want, and personally, I love that. For example, they could make a uh, uh, horror, and, and then the rest is in Russian. I can't read that. I, I gotta play this. Okay, forget everything else I talked about. This is the best game I've seen today.